All right, so everybody has had a chance to go through this. Um, this is in your workbook, Qu rhetorical analysis question two, right? And we have talked about how um, we are looking for how the word choice and structure uh, contributes to the purpose. What is the subject of this piece? We read the prompt and we understand there were some clues in there that Don Marquis is presenting a facetious, almost perfect state. He's suggesting this almost perfect state, right? What is he talking about? What is this really, this piece is about? What's the subject of it? Say that again. Okay, the last, all right, the final chapter of our lives, okay, okay, end of days, maybe, okay, anybody else want to put it in different terms? What do we, what is everybody like, you know, everybody's working for the weekend, right, you know, uh, who's saying that, was that Foreigner? Um, you know, it's like we live our lives like, I can't wait till it's Friday. I can't wait till it's, I'm 16 so I get my license. I can't wait till, uh, you know, 18 so I can vote. I can't wait till, uh, you know, graduate from high school. We're always like kind of like wishing it was further on down. It's like we're wishing our lives away. Okay, and we all, we, then we, you know, we go out, we get a job, and we're working towards what? When we get old, we retire retirement okay being put out the pasture as it were <laughs> all right what do you think what do you suppose uh motivated uh don marquis to write about this am i on screen uh yeah. don? okay can you see it or would it be better if i turned the lights off um maybe the lights off try will you try that miss lower thank you all right, we can come back to that. What might it have inspired him to, um, you know, what, per what precipitated him to write this, right? But if I want to add that sophistication point, I might think about, you know, could it be that Don Marquis is in that, you know, 10 years from retirement uh, where it's like, oh, you know, it's too, you, you know, I can't retire 10 years early, but you know, it's like still can I work 10 years? God. All right, uh, audience, who is his audience? The fans that are reading the newspaper. Yeah, the people that are reading the newspaper, they're usually, I would say they're older, and I think he was doing this to want, like, don't set out your life. Like, he's already got this plan, like 50 years of working, then you'll be 92, 10 years of the way you want to. Okay. So he's warning them to not become this such a confined life. Okay, so that's purpose, right? That's coming down to purpose. Um, you know, encouraging um, a, a lifestyle choice. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But encouraging a lifestyle choice by using what? What can we tell about the speaker? What is his primary uh, modus operandi? His primary mode of attack is what? Sarcasm. Sarcasm. We already talked about. He he also drew, a, um, you know, a, poli a you know satirical political cartoons or whatever about a cockroach and a alley cat in New York who pontificate about life, right? Um, so he's a humorist. A satirist, right? Okay, he's funny, allegedly, right? Um, you know, uh, there is nothing that modern day teenagers think more hilarious than uh, people writing in 1921. Am I correct? They were so woke then, right? It was totally fire. Uh, uh, you saw what I did there. Okay, all right. Okay, so give me some stuff like that you picked out that you really think Don Marquis, like how did he develop this argument? 
I'll, how about this? I'll, I'll point out a couple of things. I'll say that he, um, he makes an opening assertion right here. Uh, no matter how nearly perfect an almost perfect state may be, it is not nearly enough perfect unless the individuals who compose it can somewhere between birth and death have a perfectly corking time for a few years. What is a corking time? What gets corked? Champagne, wine, right? Okay, so a corking time is that period where between the um, the making the wine, the you know, the bottling the wine, and the time that it sits up in ages and becomes, you know, um, you know, aged and uh, mature is the word that I'm looking for there, right? Okay, you might buy a $200 bottle of wine from uh, Bordeaux, France, um, and then open it and it turned out to be vinegar. Not that vinegar doesn't have its own uses, but it wasn't what you had in mind when you bought the $250 bottle of wine anyway. Look, it just already jumped up 50 bucks. Look, okay, see how that works? Okay. Um, we are after a system that scarcely knows it is a system. The great thing is to have the largest number of individuals as happy as may be for a little while at least, sometime before they die. Is he already being a little bit sarcastic? Is he already being sharp-tongued a little bit? Okay, but it's subtle, right? Okay, so there's a subtle um, mockery happening here, okay? Um, you know, that the largest number of individuals can be happy for a minute before they die. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit dark, right? There's a, there's a sharpness to it, you can tell, right? Um, is there anything in that next paragraph? that you might use uh, that to point out his mocking tone. Look at the next paragraph between lines uh, 11, 12 and He's categor cate um, or cataloging. Um, he said, but children not knowing that they're having a heavy time have a good many hard times. It's like they don't know that they're, they're not facing this like, problems of like, adultery. Adult, adultery? <laughs> Trials so of. They're not like, living in the moment of their time. Okay. I love this. Empathy is not what it is cracked up to be. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you had it made when you were a, an infant, right? You know, how was your infancy, Josh? Pretty good. Do you remember it? No. no. <laughs> it's silly, right? Okay. Um, then what about, I love this one right here. Um, you know, but children not knowing that they are having an easy time, have a good many hard times, right? It's hard, but why does the kid, why does the toddler just scream and throw a fit and cry? But, you know, he's like, why can't I just have what I want when I want it, right? You know, they don't understand. Life is it's complicated for a toddler who has limited language to express himself. Growing and learning and obeying the rules of their elders or fighting against them are not easy things to do. Adolescence is certainly far from uniformly pleasant, period. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, 
when I think back on my adolescence, it was, you know, I mean, this is a doggone struggle, right? You know, it's like, I'm an adult, on it. Why do you still make me follow all these rules, right? So I love that adolescence is certainly far from uniformly pleasant. What would you say is, he, is the technique that he's employing there? Certainly far from uniformly pleasant, period. Can we call that understatement? Mm. A little bit of an understatement. You, you guys are living it. Being a teenager is hard, right? You know, understatement. Okay. Well, maybe not for everybody. <laughs> um, some some people got it made in the shade, right? Um, all right. Uh, no, being you know. All the way, you know what? It's it's a struggle all the way up. You know, now they have a quarter life crisis, and you're gonna be 25, and you have a college education, and you're gonna be surprised that nobody's come beating down your door trying to give you a job yet. <laughs> you know, all right. There's struggles with every period in life. There is a struggle, right? And he's kind of downplaying that for for humor. Look at the next paragraph, lines 29 to. Um, uh, 34, 33. Did anybody find anything in there um, fun? Could you use that to argue um, how he's contributing to the satire? Assertions, subtle mockery, um, understatement, cataloging the trials. I'm just kind of mapping this thing out here. Um, all right, no, my um, it is it is to old age that we look for reimbursement. All right, he's starting to get to his point here. We look to old age for reimbursement for all these struggles. Right, the most of us and most of us look in vain. For the most of us have been wrenched and racked in one way or another until old age is the most trying time at all, right? So he's pointing out a, a flaw in this almost perfect society where we put off our happiness until old age because now our bodies are all wrenched and racked from, you know, um, rebuilding our fences every year after the hurricane season and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> working so hard and struggling with just the natural frailties of old age, right? Um, what about this next paragraph? Is there anything in there that we could use? Did anybody point out anything there? Underline anything in that? In all, in the almost perfect state, every person shall have at least 10 years before he dies of Happiness, what did we say? Easy, care easy. Happy read that again. Easy, carefree, happy living. Okay, so we should have a few years. How long should we get? Personally, we look forward to an old age of dissipation and indolence and unreverend unre disrepute. Dis Do we know what those words mean? Can we use our context clues? Personally, we look forward to an old age of dissipation and laziness and unreverend disrepute. In 50 years, we shall be 92 years old. He's given his, um, how old is he? 42. So he's right there approaching middle age, right? Um, we intend to work, so we can say that about the speaker. He's 42 years old. If he started his job at 21, 22, then he's, you know, probably 10, about 10 years from retirement. Guess what? He's right about where I am, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, maybe that's why I can relate to this article so much. We intend to work rather and during this 50 years and accumulate enough to live on without working anymore for the next 10 years. 
for we have determined to die at the age of 102. What's happening to the level of his sarcasm? He's ramping it up, isn't it? Okay, he's ramping that sarcasm right on up there. He's twisting this, tightening the, of the wing nut. Yeah. Okay, what, what do we, um, do we remember what that's called when you get, you remember the Marx Brothers piece, how he just, his examples just got increasingly more and more ridiculous? Ad absurdum. Ad absurdum. Reductio ad absurdum. But we hadn't even got to the juicy part yet. Mr. Delamar can make song and movie references to the things that we're studying in literature ad nauseum. That means until we're sick, right? Or ad infinitum, until forever, right? Ad reductio, ad absurdum, is when you reduce your argument to just hilarity. Right? Just a ridiculous mess. All right? Um, do you have to remember that? I mean, they might not even give you a piece of satire, but that would be a great thing to have in the essay locked into your arsenal. Right? <clears throat> um, but you can also put it in your own terms. You know, his, his, his sarcasm, he ramps up the level of his, his mockery and sarcasm as the essay goes on, as the column goes on, I should say. Okay, uh, during the last 10 years, we shall indulge ourselves in many things that we have been forced by circumstance to forego. We have always been compelled, uh, and we shall be compelled for many years to come to be prudent, cautious, staid, sober, conservative, industrious, respectful of established institutions, a model citizen. Right? Isn't that what becoming an adult is all about in our society? Sit still. Be quiet. Listen. Be um, sober, conservative, industrious, respectful. Right? Um, and then he says, but the people whom we really prefer, you know, when we're young, we're excited by... people who we really prefer uh, as associates, though we do not approve of their ideas, are the rebels, the radicals, the wastrels, the vicious, the poets, the Bolshevists, the idealists, the nuts, the lucifers, the agreeable good-for-nothings, the sentimentalists, the prophets, the freaks, right? That's exaggerating things a bit, right? But yeah, you know, we're younger and we idolize like, you know, movie stars and free thinking individuals and things like that, right? And then he moves on to his final and last um, hilarity. Read that for us. Who will read that? That last paragraph, um, oh, 66. Okay, go ahead, Lane. Between the years of, what's going to happen to us in our 92 to 102, where we're really our last 10 years of life, where we're really going to reap the benefits. What is that going to look like? Between the years of 92 and 102, however, we shall be the ribald, useless, drunken person we have always wished to be. We shall have a long white beard and long white hair. We shall not walk at all, but recline in a wheelchair and bell for alcoholic beverages. In the winter, we shall sit before the fire with our feet in a bucket of hot water with a decanter of corn whiskey near at hand, and write ribald songs against organized society. Strapped to one arm of our chair will be a 45 caliber revolver, and we shall shoot out the lights when we want to go to sleep instead of turning them off. When we want air, we shall throw a silver candlestick through the front window and be damned to it. We shall address public meetings to which we have invited because of our wisdom in a vein of Jochen malice. Okay, j yeah. J uh, what does Jochen mean? Jocking, uh, jovial, joking, joking, right? Sounds like joking, right? Okay, um, so yeah, we're going to be this old, long, white hair, long, white beard, in a wheelchair, drinking whiskey with our feet in warm water, too lazy to get up and turn off the light. And I guess in 1921, they didn't have 
clap on, clap off. Or light, Alexa. Uh, or Alexa, turn off the light. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. You know how to make your Alexa turn your lights on and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it makes like a special kind of wiring and stuff. But I yeah. don't know if I want Alexa to have that much control. She's already listening to everything I'm talking about. Yeah. So she knows how much I talk to my cat and to myself. <laughs> already I'm at a disadvantage, right? I mean, she already okay. knows my music taste. God right. knows what else. Okay, do I really want her messing with me and turning the music on 11 and uh, turning the lights on and flicking the lights at 2 o'clock in the morning when I'm trying to sleep and thinking that my house is haunted? Yes, I don't do. know. All right. It'll uh, be fun. Come on. Let's anyway, <laughs> Don Marquis had no I, for, uh, forethought of such things. So he instead describes an individual who with a 45 caliber gun is shooting out the lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? I mean, you know, okay. So what I would like for you to do is, does he make a final um, uh, call for action, like any argument, whether a joke argument or a real argument, usually involves some sort of either imperious, you will do this, imperative, argument or a hortative one, which is a sort of suggestion at how one should live one's life and how one should behave, which is this. Imperative or hortative. Horatio talked about suggesting, simple suggestion of um, you know, where you implore, you beg someone to make some changes as opposed to you will do this or else, which would be more imperative, right? Okay, so does he make a final call for action? What are we going to do if we're going to sign up for this? Is there a, a final sales pitch here? In the meantime, of course, you understand you can't have us pinched and deported for our journey. Okay. All right, you can't have us pinched and deported for, what is a yearning? Your longing, your wants, your desires, right? Okay, what you got? He said, we've always been, but for our part, we've always been deliberate and we shall continue being deliberate for a good many years yet. And we yearn to come out in our true colors at last. Okay, and we yearn to come out in our true colors at last. You know what this reminds me of? You ever heard that expression, to be a conservative as a, uh, to be so a very conservative at a young age is to lack heart. And then to be a uh, liberal at an old age is to mean you lack brains. <laughs> you ever heard that expression? Okay, uh, like the young are full of heart and free thinking idealism and stuff and then you get older and you're a little bit more conservative, right? Uh, what about what Thoreau said? We are, um, people are, I had to write it down, most people lead lives of quiet desperation. You know, we work for the bank, we work for a company, we pay a mortgage, you know, we sign up for society's constructs, we get married, we, we have children, you know, we do the stuff. What did Prufrock lament about? He'd had some experiences, but now he's old and he's not really having many anymore. He doesn't even know if he should dare to climb a stair or eat a peach, right? Because he's old and wrenched and racked and brittle now, right? But he still wants to live. Um, so, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to um, come up with your thesis statement in a sentence, in a, in a concise succinct statement. What is um, Don Marquis suggesting that we, what does he do it and how does he do it, right? You know, so I'd focus on um, his tone. What about his structure? It's, it's fine in your thesis just to simply say he, he, um, he organizes it as his essay is satire. He uses satire to create what tone in expressing his idea that what, okay? And then I want your three best 
pieces of evidence, direct quotes, like that you could just use line references, you know, what, which three minimum would you use um, to show this developing, increasing level of uh, sarcasm that he has working here, okay? 